All right, so as you might already know, the proton gradient produces most of the cell's ATP. Okay, so an electron pair, so an electron pair donated from, say, NADH, causes 10 protons to be pumped across the membrane, okay, when passing from NADH to O2 through the three respiratory complexes. So remember, the electrons flow through three respiratory complexes, the NADH dehydrogenase complex, the cytochrome um, B, C1 complex, and... Um, cytochrome oxidase complex and all of those complex basically by the time this happens what, what winds up happening is 10 total protons are pumped um, some of the energy is used from the um, movement of the electrons through the respiratory complex to pump protons and the total is 10 and in order to make ATP okay so if we want to make some ATP we want to synthesize ATP it actually requires four protons okay so four protons are needed to make a each ATP three for the synthesis from ADP, and one for the ATP export to the cytosol. So remember, the ATP has to be moved from inside the mitochondria back to the cytosol where it's, where it's needed. So it requires an additional proton, so a total of four protons. And one ATP export is, and therefore you probably, maybe, maybe people will memorize this, I don't know, um, that 2.5 ATP molecules are produced for each NADH molecule, okay? So basically, the way this works is you have 2.5, so you have 2.5 ATP per NADH, all right? And you have 1.5 ATPs, and that's per FADH2. And it says here that 20 ATP molecules are produced per molecule of glucose as a result of the citric acid cycle. So how did they come up with that number? Well, okay, we have one glucose molecule. So one glucose molecule, right? But remember, that's already split into pyruvate, and each pyruvate becomes one acetyl-CoA molecule, okay? So what we wind up having here as a result of the first glucose molecule, what, we, what, enters, what actually enters the citric acid cycle is two acetyl-CoA molecules, okay? So we wind up with two acetyl-CoA molecules entering. Now one turn of the citric acid cycle produces three NADH, okay? One FADH2 and one ATP from GTP, okay, from GTP you produce one ATP. So basically what you could do to calculate this is you can say, okay, I have three NADH, so three times 2.5, and then I have one times 1.5, and I have just one here. So this right here equals 1.5, this equals 7.5, and this equals 1. Okay, so if we add that up together, so that's 7, 8, 9, 10. So this gives us a total of 10 ATPs. So we get 10 ATP generated from one turn of the citric acid cycle with one acetyl-CoA molecule. So all you have to do if you have two acetyl-CoAs, it will equal 20 ATPs because you would simply double this number, okay? So that's how they get the number of 20 ATP, mole uh, ATP molecules produced per glucose molecule. All right, so I just wanted to work that out for you and show you, because these are, these are another, this is another common type of question. They ask you to, you know, calculate how many ATPs you'll produce under certain circumstances. So that results from the citric acid cycle compared to the 30 ATP molecules that can be produced in a total from complete oxidation of one molecule of glucose. So, you know, generally I said anywhere from 30 to 32. I mean, you hear all different kinds of numbers. It really depends on what tissue you're talking about and what's going on at the time. So a good, a safe assumption is um, 30 ATP molecules are produced by the complete oxidation of glucose. So I just wanted to show that to you guys and talk a little bit about this.